Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this webinar on your web presence is more than just your website. Uh, that will be presented by our VP of Client Services, Bob Sheehan. My name is Ken Green, Senior Digital Consultant with Surefire Social. And once again, welcome everybody. Uh, just to touch a little bit, we work uh, with a lot of manufacturers and small SMBs within the remodeling industry, obviously including well-born cabinets. I know a lot of you who are at the webinar today are part of Wellborn Cabinets, and we're very happy with our partnership with them. So the other the other thing that Bob's going to talk about on the uh, your how your web your web presence is much more than your website. If a simple analogy that if you happen to have a showroom but you had no roads leading to that showroom, no one would be able to find you. So. Bob's going to talk about that, about how we can help drive traffic and the ingredients involved to drive the proper traffic to your website, and then obviously it converts into more leads so you can generate revenue. So with that being said, I'll turn it over to Bob. Thanks very much, Ken. I appreciate the introduction and welcome everybody to the webinar. Um, we, uh, as Kenny said, we were, we were, we were talking today about uh, five components of your web presence that are you know beyond your website that are more than your you know just the, the site itself and you know as I was as I was putting this together it occurred to me that there are you know way more than five and what we've done today is we've just taken what we think are five of the most important you know, components and we thought we'd talk about them a little bit and show you some examples of of how they impact what goes on um, on your uh, website and how they can how they can help you um, so the, the five components that we're going to talk about are directory listings, uh, online review sites, social media. Um, we, we put the two together, uh, search engine optimization and search engine marketing. And then uh, the last one is content marketing. And um, so we'll, we'll kind of take these one at a time and, and talk through kind of how they work. Um, the first one being directory listings, right? And, and for those of you who have ever done anything with directory listings, you know there are literally hundreds of these things out there. Uh, Google, um, you know, really cares about 50 of them. There are there are a group of Google's, you know, what they call preferred or focus uh, directories, and and we, uh, we we pay a lot of attention to kind of making sure that people are are listed properly in those. And what, what we found as we've been doing this is that the, the key things to, to think about with directory listings is, is consistency. And that's probably the hardest thing to accomplish, right? When you've got uh, uh, directory listings that are across a lot of different um, places, right? There's, you know, 50, 60, or, you know, in some cases, hundreds of these directories where you have to sign in and claim and, you know, be able to manage the content on those, it, it's a very difficult thing to, you know, kind of make them all the same. Um, but that's essentially what the search engines are looking for. They, they want to they wanna see that across the directory listings, um, all of the addresses are the same, the companies listed the same, the phone numbers are the same, and when they see that consistency across a wide array of directories, that's a very positive thing uh, because it, it makes it makes the decision on, you know, whether to trust this website uh, easier, right? It's a it's a big factor in whether they think that the website is, you know, what it claims to be, and and it, it's clear that there's been a lot of work done with it, and so they they try to understand, you know, that by looking at the consistency across all of these, and when that's good, um, that's a a very positive thing for a website. Um, key ranking factors in, in uh, directory listings are, you know, accuracy, right? Is the correct information there? We already talked about phone number, address, hours of operation, right? Does the name appear the same in all of them, right? And then the other, the other piece that, that we're, we're finding is, is now possible with these, if you use the right tools, is, it, it, you know, you can rip offers across all your directories and you can kind of stay current with them have messaging that, that travels across them and shows that you're paying attention to what you look like 
in your um, you know beyond your your site. So those those are the kind of the key components as they relate to um, directory listings. Um, there's another, in, in some ways, similar uh, aspect of this, which is review sites. Um, so you know the big ones that you that you recognize here are Yelp, Google Plus, Google My Business, right? Guild Quality, Facebook. These are places where customers can go in and write positive or, in some cases, not so positive things about you. And um, that you know that's a, a, a an important and becoming more important way that Google decides who, who belongs on the first page. And as you can see from the, the listing that we've got here, I just took a little screenshot of replacement windows in Boston. Right? I'm, I'm located up here in Boston, and, and so I just went on the search engine, typed in replacement windows in Boston, and here's what came up. And you can see there's websites in here, but there's also um, review sites. So you know, start out with Window World, but then you're looking at Yelp, Right reviews, uh, right window, Home Advisor reviews, Angie's List reviews. So what's happening is these reviews are moving up into the natural search. They're actually competing for position with local websites, and so your uh, presence in these places, your the accuracy of your listings there, the quality of the reviews that show up there, uh, clearly are impacting. How um, how these things show up in search, and how and and how you're going to show up in search. Um, so that's something that we want to pay a lot of attention to. When you look at you know what's going on in these these places, and it's been a lot of research done on on how people use them. Um, you know, there's 92% of people have more confidence when they when they find you online. Than something that somebody says, right? Um, Seventy percent of people consult reviews and ratings before they buy something. Um, so that's why these things are becoming such an important part of search, right? They, they because they carry weight with customers. Then the search engines want to make sure that they're using them um, accurately in in how they display search. Um, one of the key things that we want to do with reviews is to monitor them and. Well, we have a, a dashboard called SurePulse that we work with at Surefire, and we try to try to monitor what's going on. This is one small aspect of that, but we what we do is we we find the words that are being used in reviews, and that helps us to understand uh, people's reputation and it helps to maybe point out areas where uh, things might be improved. So you can you can look at a word cloud like this, which is basically um, we go in and we scrape the reviews and we find the, the words that show up more than other words and you can see that in this case um, there's a lot of uh, you know positive things being said here um, courteous right um, excellent you know we talk about different kinds of products uh, beautiful clean um, but you can imagine if you went in here and you saw things like high pressure sales or uh, if you saw you know disappointment or you know negative words that you you'd be able to understand that, that your reputation out there wasn't great and that you needed to do something about it. So we we place a lot of emphasis on this kind of stuff and we try to provide tools where people can uh, monitor these things and and respond to them so that people uh, you know co companies out there with um, you know issues in these reviews can can solve them and we know that that these things uh, help you in making your site show up higher in search. Um, another key component is social media. Uh, we're all familiar with these things: Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, right? We, we all, um, in some ways, uh, interact with them. I, I don't know of anybody that doesn't have some level of social media activity going on in their lives. And you know, certainly customers are very uh, active in social. Um, the the thing that that is really important to understand about about social media is that it's part of search as well. So that in addition to your website, the things that happen on social media around your website are going to help that website show up better in search. Um, so, so we try to obviously make sure that the things that we're doing uh, impact that. Um, so certain kinds of media, certain kinds of social are used differently. F Facebook's about brand loyalty, customer reviews. You can create an online community there. Whereas Twitter is very much a kind of real-time news and events kind of thing, right? It, it, it runs by you like a parade. 
Um, but you can definitely uh, get people to interact with these things if you use each one of them, um, you know, strategically, right? Make it part of your overall mix. And, and the signals that come from social media impact search. Those, those things get measured by the search engines, um, and because they measure them, we think they use them. So, you know, they, Google knows how many Facebook fans you've got. They know how many people are following you on Twitter. They know um, what's going on with certainly Google+. Plus. Google+, Plus was Facebook's attempt to kind of get in that game and to um, have that impact what they do on, on the search engine with placement. Um, there's also, you know, an indirect impact from social media, you know, related to links, right? When, when you publish things on uh, Facebook, for instance, you want to link back to your website, right? That's, that's a, something that's going to help it rank better. Um, increasing reviews on Google, right, leads to happier customers and overall um, a better kind of environment around a website that's going to that's going to help. Um, so there's there's ways to use social media that are you know going to help the ranking, and we 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 believe um, as others do that that when you pay attention to this and you kind of work it along the, the same way that you that you manage the website. As you manage it as all one big, um, you know, online presence, that you you end up getting better results. So we, we find that customers that are more social um, end up doing better in search. So again, we provide tools that that help people to understand what's going on with the with the social media, right? How are how are likes changing? Are we growing likes? Do we have more followers? Do we, you know, how many people are we reaching with posts? That kind of thing. So, you know, we recommend that when when folks are um, managing this stuff, that they do it strategically, that they understand how, you know, how you're growing these things and how you're kind of pushing that ball forward. And, you know, as with anything, if you pay attention to it, it gets better. Um, search engine optimization uh, is another factor that that's really not your website, right? You can build a website and put it up there and have it be there. Um, independently of whether you do anything to it. Um, we find that certainly when you don't do anything to it, that's not a good thing, that it doesn't, it doesn't change, doesn't get better. Um, but when you, when you work the problem on the website, um, that's a kind of a separate effort that, that will move the ball forward, that will help the, work, the website will rank better. Um, and ultimately when sites rank better, they get better, um, better lead flow, better you know, customer engagement. They do. They have. They turn into a better ROI. Um, so search engine optimization is two things. It's on page and off page. On page is the things that you do to the site that that impact whether it's going to rank higher or lower, or you know, kind of work the problem on the on the site itself. Off page is the activities you do on other websites that help your site rank better. Those could include guest bloggings, you know, postings. The directory listings that we talk about, social media, press releases, things that you do, you know, in other places. And so, what what we we recommend is is um, you know that there be a, a search engine optimization effort going on on your site, and that it be organized and systematic, and that it be you know comprehensive. So we look at all different things. We, we you know the, there are lots of components to a website that will make it rank better. And all of these, you know, URLs and you know, structure of people's navigation, right? The the, the content, right? The meta tags, the title tags, the um, descriptions, optimizing blogs. Um, so we, we we recommend that that each one of those components be be handled and managed. And when we when we do that, and when others do that um, strategically and effectively. Sites rise, right? When they rise in the search engines, they uh, they generate better results. Um, images on websites, right? You you can have a you can have a page on a website with an image, and um, that page can be you know in a certain place. But in some cases, if you do things to that image, like putting an alt tag on it or changing the size of it, making that image more optimized, making it faster, making it easier for Google to understand what it is, um, that can help the page rank higher. So image optimization is an aspect of search engine optimization that, that 
definitely helps to um, you know to move the ball forward. Um, another aspect of this, another one of the of the five bullet points, is search engine marketing. So beyond search engine optimization, where we're doing things largely in you know in ways to the site and to other sites that that aren't really paid, like we're not we're not going out and buying placement. In search engine marketing, we are. Where, where really what you're looking at is, is going out and buying paid ads, paid search ads, pay per click, display ads, um, you know, cost per thousand kinds of uh, impressions, uh, Google AdWords, right? You're, you're, you're paying to be somewhere and you're actually paying for the position that you're getting from that. Um, search engine marketing is a component that will help your website because it, it brings traffic to that site and it, and it you know, it provides you with an ROI, and it's a way that we kind of work the overall. You know, we recommend that there be um, a component of paid search in in everything that you do. You know, some small percent. It doesn't have to be big, but it does help you to um, maintain your web presence. Um, you know, and gives you a lot of control over over how that goes. Um, and the last kind of component that we wanted to talk about today is content marketing. Uh, content marketing is basically what do I do with my content, right? Am I creating content? Am I creating ebooks, blog posts, right? Do I do events? Do I do videos, right? Am I am I doing podcasts? Things that where I'm I'm talking about my business, you know, talking about becoming kind of an authority on my business, and then I'm creating ways to tell the world what I'm thinking, right? I can, I can write about things and distribute those things, and that's content marketing. And what, what we talk about in content marketing, the things that we think are important, are that it be strategic, right? What am I trying to accomplish with this content? And, you know, for, for instance, right, if, if I had a particular area of my business, a particular product that I sell that, that I was not showing up very well in search, for instance, right? I could write a lot about that topic and put it on my website, and I could put it on other websites. I could use that topic as something that I kind of write about and, and distribute that. And I would find, I think, over a period of time that, that my presence in that particular thing would get better as I became more of an authority and as people interacted with that content, we would find that that you know it, I would become more more visible in that area. So that's that's kind of the strategic thing, right? You say, okay, I need to be more visible here. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's the content I'm going to create and distribute around that thing, and then go out and distribute it. Go out and kind of have a have a plan around you know how I distribute it and where, and then measure the results. And we find that when we take that approach to, you know, people's businesses, that they, um, they we definitely are able to move the needle in in ways that that really help. Um, some examples of uh, industry expertise, right? Content marketing, where you know there's blogging going on, there's there's videos that are being created around certain topics, and those are being distributed in. Um, hey, Bob. Place. Yep. Bob, sorry to interrupt. This is Jennifer. Um, I wanted to let all of you know that if you have any questions about the material Bob's been covering so far, we're going to be answering your questions during Q&A. So please enter your questions in the question box. That's the tab that says questions. You just pull that down, type in any questions you have, any comments. We'd love to hear from you and keep this interactive. All right. Back to you, Bob. <laughs> all right. Sorry about that. <laughs> I should have said that earlier. No. Uh, so just another, yeah. <laughs> another example of, of you know how people use content, right? In this case, it's GAF, but um, you know using creating blogs around you know certain topics and then and then distributing them, and ultimately with a goal in mind, right? We want to become more present about this thing, and here's the here's the distribution method we're going to use, and and here's how we're gonna we're gonna track that. Uh, here's another example of uh, a partner of ours, IBM Watson. Uh, who's doing some uh, technical and expertise kinds of approaches, right? Um, so where they've got a, a video that they distribute and you can find out more about them. Um, and, you know, 
basically it's it's about them talking about what they do. Um, but it's not a sales message. It's more of an expertise message. It's a you know here's here's how our thing fits into the world, and here's what you need to know about it. And you know we're the people who do it. Um, so in, and and on this particular case, we've got the YouTube link down here. When you when you um, at the end of the of the webinar, if you want to request um, the you know you can just send in to Jen, and we'll send you the the PowerPoint which has the link to all of this stuff. Um, so the the kind of the summary of this right is is you know having a, a you know, an approach to, to doing all of these things, right? We've been saying now, we've been in, uh, doing this for, you know, six years or so, and 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 our, our approach to this has been comprehensive, right? We've always been saying, you know, you, you can't just do one thing. The idea is you got, you want to try to scale it all. You want to try to do all of these things at once. And so you, we're using tools and recommending that people use tools around how to measure this stuff, how to do it at scale, how to do a lot of it. And when that happens, when when you're able to um, kind of look at all of these things individually and and manage and measure them, that that's what helps the website, you know, do better. So you know, there's tools like Google Search Console, which used to be called Google Webmaster Tools, where you can look at the content on your website and understand how it's ranking and and measure you know where you are versus where you want to be. Um, there are lots of tools about social media which will help you to understand, you know, how people feel about you, what kind of sentiment is being um, displayed on your um, material, how it's being, um, you know, kind of how it's being reacted to out there. Directory listings. We actually have a directory listing scan on our website where you can go in and and find out, you know, what your condition is, right? If you've got a business and you're wondering, you know, am I Am I good with that or not? I mean, it's it's about a five-minute thing where you just put in your your URL and we'll, we'll show you the answer. Um, tracking online reviews, right? That's a very very important piece of how to make your website show up better in search. And if your reviews are are good and you're responding to them and everything's great, that's a really positive thing. And if they aren't, um, then you need to take some action. And that that's uh, you know so paying attention to it. Is really the answer, and then you can then you can take action on on whatever happens. And then there there are plugins for WordPress SEO, uh, WordPress uh, websites that that kind of help you do these things and and do them in a way that will you know do good for you, right? And and but it starts with you know getting the tool and then kind of learning how to use it. Um, and obviously, as you know, we're in this business too, and we'd be happy to. You know, take a look at any situation you've got, and and tell you what we think. So, Stephen, I think you wanted to um, add something at the end, right? Hi. Yeah, this is Jennifer. Um, we've got some pretty interesting questions from the group, and I also wanted to let you know that we're going to launch a poll in just a minute to give you an opportunity to get a copy of the recording of today's presentation. And also, if you'd like some help with your online presence, we can do an evaluation for you. Uh, so just choose one of the options when we launch the poll. Um, and then let's see if we've got some questions. Uh, first question for you, Bob. How much budget should we allocate to your marketing? Well, I, I, I think that's a very business-specific um, you know, questions. Sometimes uh, I know I know businesses that allocate as much as fifteen percent to marketing, and I know some businesses that allocate two or three percent. It's really it really depends on the business and what kind of what kind of business they're in, what they're selling, and and you know it's it's tough to say that there's not one rule that, that applies to everybody. All right, very fair response. Um, another question we have is, how do you choose an agency? That's an interesting question. I, I, you know, I've worked at agencies before, and I've been on the client side where I've actually chosen agencies, and I, and I think the, the best answer to that question is meet with them, right? And, and when you meet with somebody and you talk about what your problems are, and you um, kind of, you know, see what their response is to how would you do this, right? What do you think about the solution to this? 
um, I think you can you can arrive at a at an answer pretty quickly, right? If you just meet with them and kind of hey, here's what's going on. Um, what do you think? And if there's chemistry there and you and they seem to make sense and they seem to know what they're talking about, that's usually a you know a step in the right direction. Okay. Another question someone asked in the same line is. What's the difference between hiring an agency to do my marketing versus doing my marketing myself? Well, I think the biggest thing is that agencies have particular expertise, right? Like we we have expertise in in the online side of this digital marketing. We've been doing it for a long time. We're we have our our um, we're, we're at all the shows where we read all the publications. We in some cases we write for the publications. Um, so we know what's going on. Um, trying to do this yourself, or trying to do direct mail yourself, and and you know, or TV, and and kind of keep up on the latest methods and practices is very very difficult. So I don't know. I, I I think hiring the expertise is generally a better answer, unless you've got budgets that allow you to bring it in house at a at a scale that that really allows you to hire some experts. Yeah. I think you'll have some good feedback on this next question as well. Uh, the question is, what content should I post on social? Yeah, there's a lot of different kinds of content. You know, we, we, we recommend that people publish uh, a variety. So, so you know, the, the first instinct is I want to publish things about what I do. And we, we don't recommend that it all be that, right? So if you start with about 40% of the of the content that you publish to social being the being you know the thing that I do right if I'm a roofer I 40 percent of it should be about roofing but the rest of it should be about you and about you know events that you go to and things that are happening in your business and things that you're doing and you know things that you care about maybe maybe you're a sponsor of the little league team in your town right um, that kind of content is always good to mix in with the straightforward, you know, this is what I do, would you like to hire me kind of content. Um, and, and we find that that kind of a mix gets better engagement, it's less salesy, and it, it keeps people engaged with you longer. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, we've got one more question, and we'll be closing up the poll soon, so please vote in the polls. And our last question is for someone with multiple locations. They ask if they uh, should be listing all of their locations and local directories if they have multiple locations. Yeah, the, the Google direction on this, what, what Google says is that your business should look online the same way as it looks in the real world. So if you've got three locations, you should have three sets of directory listings that identify those locations and place them on the maps. Um, if you've got, you know, 17 locations, then you want to do that. Um, especially if you want those, if you want those people or those places to be visited by customers. Um, it, you know, we we have people that want to go the other way, and they want to say, well, I, I have 37 towns I care about, therefore I want to do 37 sets of directory listings. And well, the problem with that is if you're not physically located in those towns then it looks like you're game in the situation and, and that's generally not a good thing to do. But if you've got physical locations in multiple places, we think that you need to be um, in directory listings with, with all of those places. They need to be on your website um, in the same way, right? They need to exactly the same name, exactly the same address, have it all be the same. Um, and you need to have Google Plus pages for all of them that, that match what you did on the directory listings to kind of have the whole thing, you know, coordinated, right? Have it all be exact. Um, so that, that's a good question because that, that's a really important one, I think, um, in terms of trying to look like you, like you should look for Google, right? They, they want you to look like you look in the real world. All right, well, that ends all of the questions that we have, and we're going to close the polls now. I wanted to thank both you and Ken for the great presentation today. Um, and Ken, if you have anything you wanted to add? No? Yeah, thank right. you. 
No, no. Thank you, everybody, again. Bob, great job. And uh, please call us or reach out to Lauren, and we'll be glad to do that free uh, website analysis. We'll let you know how you're performing on your entire web presence. So thank you again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.